Hi, I'm Jeremy Shea, the producer of Gavel Alaska. It's uh, Saturday, March 29th, day 68 of the session. No skiing for me today, unfortunately, but um, this helmet does do double duty for me as a bike helmet as well. Um, Alaska Commons had a really nice story on their site this week about Gavel Alaska and, and some of the goofier stuff we've been doing around the edges. And uh, they had some fun with some screen grabs of my video from the ski lift last week, so, so that was really nice. Thanks for that. I am in the control room right now. Our control room breaker doesn't like being on camera, so he ran away. I'm titling this meeting a little bit today. Um, it's Saturday, but uh, you know some of us are working today, covering some ballot initiatives, hearings in the Capitol. Um, the actual election with these ballot questions will be in August. I think it's during uh, primary elections for state candidates, but it's also when Alaskans get to decide if marijuana should be legalized and if the state's minimum wage should increase. Uh, the morning session today was on marijuana legalization. It asks voters to okay using marijuana for people 21 and older. It would still be banned to be used in public. Um, it was a really interesting hearing. Uh, the afternoon session today is on the uh, minimum wage question. So right now, the minimum wage in Alaska is $7.75 an hour. The ballot question asks if the minimum wage should go up to $8.75 in 2015, $9.75 in 2016, and then increase with inflation thereafter. And that's this hearing that we're following right now. Uh, so that's what's going on today. Before I get to Monday's rundown, I did want to let everyone know we finally got a tool on our site that lets you cust uh, share custom clips of our videos. This is a super useful tool. We frequently get requests for specific clips of our videos and uh, we pretty much have to turn everyone down because we're just a really small team and, and we just get overwhelmed and there's a lot of potentially hairy what ifs that we don't want to get into. But now you can share custom clips of any video or audio in our archives. Um, so maybe you want to send your mom the, the 30 second clip of when you were senator or representative introduced you on the floor without sending her, you know, scrubbing through to our video. Or maybe someone said something totally crazy or super inspiring or heartfelt or thoughtful, whatever. Uh, you can share just that bit that you want now with this new tool. No special software required. Um, that tool went live on Wednesday. Sarah Yu here at K2 and 360 North put together a super helpful short video showing how to use it. That's up on our YouTube channel and Facebook, Twitter, um, and I'll link to it here. Uh, okay, so here's what we're planning to cover on Monday, March 31st, 2014, the 70th Legislative Day. We're getting close to the end. It tends to be a lot of ping-ponging of bills between the House and Senate and the various committees and, and the poor staffers who are drafting bills and amendments all hours of the night. Um, it makes our schedules, you know, all the schedules really, especially unpredictable and unreliable. Uh, we plan to start our day at 8 a.m. in the Senate Education Committee. They've got Representative Tammy Wilson's HB 162. Wilson is a Republican from North Pole, and um, the House passed HB 162 last year. It deals with public school teacher tenure and basically makes it tougher to get tenure and keep it as a public school teacher. Um, you know, the flip side of that is it, it makes it easier to fire teachers. Uh, teachers and teachers union, you know, for the most part, they, they, they hate this. It's, uh, it's discouraging in a profession that's super important, but, you know, really stressful and, and generally not well paid. But it also makes it easier to, to fire bad teachers. That's sort of the upside of it. Uh, full disclosure, I was once a bad public school teacher. <laughs> uh, didn't help that I was right out of college and still looked like I was about 15. Um, at 9 a.m., we're following the Senate Finance Committee. They've got SJR 21, which would ask voters to amend the Constitution to change the makeup of the Judicial Council. It would stack the council with more uh, non-lawyer gubernatorial appointees instead of uh, the slightly lawyer-biased makeup of the council now. Council is responsible for making official recommendations on which judges to retain or toss. Um, supporters of this say would make the judiciary more reflective of a representative democracy. The, uh, the council's will would more closely mirror the people's will. Opponents say this would politicize the judiciary and encourage cronyism in a branch of government where political detachment is a good thing. Uh, this is by Fairbanks Republican Senator Pete Kelly. Senate Finance also has HB 199 by Representative Bryce Edgman, a Dillingham Democrat. This is the bill that would let village public safety officers be armed while they're on duty, you know, carry firearms. Uh, a majority of legislators in the House and Senate have signed on as co-sponsors, so it's a pretty safe bet that this will pass this session. At uh, 11 a.m., both the House and Senate have floor sessions scheduled. The Senate has five items on their plate, SB 156, which has to do with professional certification standards for midwives. 
passed by Senator Pete Kelly, HB 269 by Representative Steve Thompson, also a Fairbanks Republican. It extends certain legal protections that uh, medical professionals licensed in Alaska already have from being sued when they're volunteering their services. So it extends those uh, legal protections to out-of-state visiting medical professionals volunteering their services. HB 292, the 2014 Revisors Bill, this is a, an annual collection of changes to laws proposed by the legislature's in-house lawyers. The changes delete obsolete stuff, iron out inconsistencies, fix errors. It's, it's you know, apolitical stuff. It's not really supposed to be substantive. So it's, you know, revi revisors built to revisions. Um, and then there's two interesting Senate joint resolutions. SGR 19 by Senator Bill Will Willikowski. He's an Anchorage Democrat. Uh, it says Alaska likes the idea of building an American Indian Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., and then SJR 22 by Senator Kathy Giesel. She's an Anchorage Republican. SJR 22 says Alaska really doesn't like the slew of uh, post 9-11 domestic spying stuff the federal government's involved in, uh, you know, a lot of the Edward Snowden stuff, including collection and monitoring of millions of Americans' telephone records without warrants and the lack of transparency uh, of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, which makes all these secret rulings on, um, you know, all sorts of different intelligence gathering uh, decisions. That's all the Senate. Uh, the House has two bills, HB 134 and HB 140. 134 is by Representative Mia Costello, an Anchorage Republican. It creates something called a Mediset, Mediset? Medication Management Program. It's a program within the federal welfare, welfare program Medicaid, that's the one for, for poor folks, um, that the state administers. According to Costello, Mediset is a way to help the most demanding high-cost Medicaid patients uh, who have the most complicated prescription drug regimens keep track of their medications and their doctor's orders, you know, for consuming those medications. And the idea is if, if they do that better, then their quality of care improves, their quality of life improves, and the state's costs go down. So, you know, in theory, everybody wins. HB 140 uh, is by Representative Laura Reinbold. She's a Republican from Eagle River. The short title of this is the Regulation Impact Transparency Act. It has to do with the public disclosure requirements that state agencies must make when they change state regulations. So in Alaska, regulations mean something very specific in the hierarchy of laws and policy stuff. Um, so we've got the state constitution, which empowers the state legislature to make laws, also known as statutes. Those laws must fall within the bounds laid out in the constitution, um, or else they're unconstitutional. Then the legislature makes laws, and some of those laws empower state agencies of the executive branch to write regulations uh, that become part of the Alaska Administrative Code, and you sometimes see that abbreviated AAC. Regulations have to fall within the bounds uh, laid out in those state statutes that the legislature made. So Reinbold's HB 140, uh, which has bipartisan sponsors, adds a few requirements to what state agencies must do when they propose new regulations or changes to regulations. They already have to explain why they're doing what they want to do, uh, and they already have to provide a cost time es estimate for what it will cost that agency. HB 140 says if the reason for the regulation is the federal government, uh, they have to specifically identify the federal law or executive order or whatever that prompted the regulatory change. Um, and the other thing HB 140 does is it would uh, tell them they have to estimate the cost of the implementing the regulation across other state agencies as well, you know, municipalities, private people, or, or businesses. Um, okay, so that's Monday's floor session. Oh, uh, and they also have um, one other bill, HB 211, that's in limbo. That is both the House and the Senate have passed the bill, but the Senate's version is different from the version the House passed. Uh, so the House has to decide if it will concur with the Senate's version. If it does, that bill is done in the legislature. It passes, it goes to the governor for a signature. Or the House can reject the Senate's version, which kicks the bill back to the Senate, which then has to vote on whether or not to recede from its version and accept the House version. Um, if the Senate votes yes on receding, it means the bill's done and the legislature passes and goes to the governor. If they vote no on receding, uh, you know, it's time for conference committee to get together. So HB 211 is in limbo. Uh, it's by Representative Sharice Millett, an Anchorage Republican, and it would make several state agencies adopt as a primary objective getting people with disabilities jobs. Um, in the afternoon, we're following the House Resources Committee from 1 to 3 p.m. for invited testimony on the gas pipeline bill, SB 138. They plan to take a break and then take public testimony starting at 6 p.m. until, you know, whenever. Uh, so it's going to be a late evening for the committee and for us. The only other afternoon committee we're trying to follow is House Finance. Um, that committee's schedules and agendas have been especially unreliable this past week. 
lots of cancellations, delays, last minute agendas. Uh, we've been trying to follow HB 278, the governor's education package in there. Um, it's a big, complicated bill, and it sounds like they've been waiting on a heavily revised new draft of it all week. Thanks for watching. Uh, sorry I haven't been able to do these more often. Next time. Title him once. Person on the phone? Yeah. yeah. No, I missed it. <laughs>